So there are some problems on homework and otherwise in which you might want to find the horizontal tangents to the graph of a sine function which has some sort of period or phase or amplitude adjustment. So for problems like this, you certainly need to think about the unit circle and where sine and cosine are zero, for example. But the first step really is to think about, well, horizontal tangent. Whenever you see that word, the first thing you should think of is slope, right? Which should lead you to think of take a derivative. And horizontal means that the slope should be zero. Okay. So we can translate this question into a mathematical formula, which is find all points at which f primed of t is zero. Right. So you can differentiate a function that involves sine and some other composed function using the chain rule. Okay. So you define the inner function 2t minus 1 and then rewrite y as 2 sine u plus 7. Then the chain rule says that f primed of t would be dy du times du dt. Okay. Now dy du is just 2 cosine of u and then du dt just contributes an extra 2 to our universe here. Right. So we want to determine the solutions to this equation equal to 0. Now, this equation is going to be 0 if and only if, of course, cosine is 0. So the first step is to figure out at what angles theta is cosine 0. And if you think about the unit circle or take a moment to sketch it, it's pretty clear that cosine is 0 right, at pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, etc., or in general, pi over 2 plus any multiple of pi. So n here could be any integer. So if you know the angles at which cosine is 0, well, then we just need to figure out what times correspond to those angles. And solving for t in this instance gives t is 1 plus pi over 2 plus n pi over 2. Now to find the points of horizontal tangents, right, then we'd also need to find the corresponding y values, which means we take t, right, and we plug it back in to our formula for f of t, which was 2 sine of 2t minus 1 plus 7. Okay. So you know, there's no reason to really simplify t because we can see once we plug it back in here, the 2's cancel, the 1's cancel, and we end up getting 2 times sine of pi over 2 plus n pi plus 7, right? So now, if we look at the sine term here, We know that sine, if, if I plugged in n equals 0 here, for example, sine pi over 2, that would give me 1. And if I plugged in n equals 1, right, if I'm looking at the unit circle, this would be pi over 2. This would be if I added another pi to it. Down here, sine is negative 1, and up here it's 1. So those are the two possible values I could get here for sine of pi over 2 plus n pi. And this first one would occur if n is even. Right, so for example, pi over 2 plus 0 pi, or pi over 2 plus 2 pi, etc. And this one would occur if n is odd. Right? So we can see that depending on which situation I'm in, f of t would either be 9 or 5, depending on whether n was even or n was odd. Right? 